Okay, thank you, Severia, for that introduction. Um, next slide, please. <laughs> so, as we've heard from the other panelists, we'd see that seasonality is an essential feature in most environments, but it's particularly stark in dry lands from both a perspective of high variability in terms of temperature, precipitation, and vegetation, but also relative unpredictability. For example, the start of a rains can differ by almost two months, depending on what year of data you're looking at in places like Chad, Sudan, and South Sudan. And so given this high seasonal variability, and as we've heard from the other panelists, drivers of acute malnutrition also take on a very seasonal dimension and are mediated through institutions and livelihoods. So here, we're not saying that changes in temperature, precipitation, or vegetation on their own are a driver of malnutrition, rather that these seasonal changes are a trigger of the underlying and immediate drivers. And so given the complexity of the seasonal patterns of the drivers of acute malnutrition, we would expect an equally complex and nuanced pattern in acute malnutrition itself. And therefore, we need the appropriate tools and models to analyze it as described by Elena in the previous panel. Next slide, please. So I'm going to be talking about a specific study that hopefully exemplifies some of the points brought out earlier by the panelists that was recently wrapped up in Eastern Chad in partnership between Tufts University and Concern Worldwide. So first, a little bit about the context of Chad. So Eastern Chad, but also Chad really as a whole, experiences droughts about every two to three years, which is common in the drylands. But unfortunately, very frequently, these droughts end up translating into a humanitarian emergency. However, even in years where there isn't a humanitarian emergency, the prevalence of acute malnutrition still frequently exceeds or comes close to the emergency threshold of 15% prevalence. So we're seeing that this area is very much characteristic of what Helen described as an area experiencing persistent levels of acute malnutrition, even in the absence of a humanitarian emergency. So a little bit about the climate. So this part of Chad and a lot of the dry lands in the Sahel really has one main rainy season, but we really need to go beyond thinking about rainy versus dry or harvest versus post harvest and really look at the much more complexity that is found in terms of the climate variables. And one way to get at this is to look at remote sensing data. And another way to get at this is to get community perspectives on that seasonality. So this is where I'd like to direct your attention to the figure in this uh, in the slide. So communities in Chad, but also across the border in uh, Sudan, identified five main seasons. So I don't have time to get over all of them, but I'm just going to focus on a couple of the ones that are going to be most important for this presentation. The first season, as described so eloquently by Hussein, is Rushash. This is an extremely short season, about three weeks long, and it's that very beginning of a rains, that first few drops that come in the first three weeks. And then we transition into what we think of more traditionally as the rainy season. The other season I wanna bring your attention to is the season of Darat. This is the harvest season that happens right at the end of a rains when seasonal rivers begin to dry out and more farming communities harvest. And the last season I wanna bring your attention to is a season of Shita that happens right after the harvest season and into the cool dry season before we really transition into what we think of as the traditional hot dry season. So given this variability in how seasonality is described by the local communities, but also in terms of the climatic variability, we knew that if we wanted to understand uh, the drivers of acute malnutrition and the seasonal patterns of acute malnutrition, we would need to do longitudinal panel data. So what we did is we followed children six to 59 months in 89 households across eight villages for 23 months, collecting monthly data on anthropometry, as well as through interviews on hypothesized drivers of acute malnutrition. We also did in-depth qualitative work using focus groups and key informant interviews at key periods in the year. So what did we find? Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. So we found an extremely interesting pattern in acute malnutrition. We actually found two peaks of acute malnutrition. One peak was at that really important season that Bo Hussein and I described, the season of Rushash, that short season when just the first rains come. What's particularly important next is that we're actually seeing a reduction in the prevalence of acute malnutrition throughout the rainy season itself, 
And then we see a secondary, but much smaller peak at the end of a rains and before uh, the harvest season. This is the peak that we most traditionally associate with communities that do harvesting and farming. Um, next slide, please. So what's particularly interesting about this pattern is that we do not think it's just unique to Eastern Chad. Uh, research undertaken by Tufts and FAO in the past two years, looking at 20 years of nutrition data across Chad, Sudan, and South Sudan, so using smart nutrition surveys, identified almost the exactly same pattern across these three contexts. A major primary peak in Rishash, then a decrease in the prevalence of acute malnutrition during the rainy season, a small secondary peak um, at the right before the harvest season, and the best time of year, both in this secondary data analysis and in our primary data analysis in GAS beta, was that cool, dry season. That's when the prevalence of acute malnutrition falls almost to be SDG targets for 2025. Uh, next slide, please. So what could be responsible for these uh, peaks of acute malnutrition? Well, we collected a host of data from both the quantitative and qualitative work. And while I don't have time to go into all of the possible drivers, I do want to bring your attention specifically to the drivers identified under the first rains, the season of Rushash. As you can see, this is a particularly vulnerable uh, period according to households from the key informant interviews, but also from our quantitative surveys. This is a time of period where women have an extremely high workload, which unfortunately translates into less frequent feeding practices, including breastfeeding and hygiene practices. It's also according to the communities and the veterinary services, the highest burden of animal disease, but also at the same time, it's the period of time when households reported most likely to be sharing the same few minimal water sources with animals and humans. So the next peak that I wanna bring your attention to is that secondary peak that we described right between the rainy and harvest season. So this one is associated with, again, the more traditional drivers of acute malnutrition, high levels of food insecurity and a high burden of malaria. And the last season that I wanna bring your attention to is the cool dry season. So remember I told you this is the time of year that both the secondary and primary data collection identified as having the lowest burden of acute malnutrition. And we can see that reflected in the very few drivers that were identified as problematic during this year. So again, to me, this is a very optimistic image that we can achieve these low levels of acute malnutrition in the dry lands. Next slide, please. So what does this mean for us? Well, it means that all interventions and policies need to be understood with respect to how specialized livelihood strategies engage with environmental variability. So interventions must emphasize and address different drivers at different seasons. We all generally agree that in order to prevent acute malnutrition, we need to take a multi-sectoral approach. But what I think is absent from that discussion is the issue of temporality. It's the idea that we need to address different sectors or components of different sectors at different times of year. Now, this thinking is already common when it comes to food insecurity or programming around farming and climate smart activities. We know that we have to focus those activities only at certain times of year in order for them to be valuable for the communities. But we really need to apply that same temporal seasonal lens to other drivers, so in terms of water access, hygiene, zoonotic diseases, even gender practices. So we really need to apply an approach that thinks both multi-sectorally, but also multi-temporally. And how do we do that? Well, the starting point for that is really how we design our data collection and the models we apply, as so eloquently described by Elena in the previous panel. And that's the way that we can really capture and understand the seasonality of acute malnutrition and its drivers in drylands and more widely. Thank you very much. And I look forward to your questions.